We're on lesson one of chapter two where we'll find square roots and compare real numbers. First we'll find and approximate square roots. Next we'll cl classify numbers and then we'll graph and order real numbers. First we need to evaluate these expressions or find the square root. I want you really to pay attention to the signs before. See they're all different in this case. We have a plus or minus. We have nothing or just a positive and then a negative. Every square root has potentially two answers. Um, negative 6 times negative 6 will give you positive 36, which would be the square root of 36. Or you also could do positive 6 times positive 6, and that would give you an answer of, of 36 as well. So what it means by that is I want the, both the positive and the negative answers. So you would say negative 6 and then positive 6. Those would be the two answers for the plus and minus. This is just once the positive square root. So what time, times what would be 49? That would be 7 times 7. So this would be the square root of 49. When there's a negative, it's looking only for that negative square root then. So what two negative numbers equals 4? Well, negative 2 times itself would give you positive 4. So that would be the negative answer there. Here we have to approximate the square root to the nearest integer. So this one takes a little bit more work because 103 is not a perfect square root. You can't multiply two numbers to get 103. So what you need to do is you need to decide, okay, what are the two perfect squares below it and above it? So let's say um, 103, 100 is 10 times 10, so that'd be 100, and that's less than 103, but that's also less than 11 times 11, which would be 121. Okay, so we know between 10 and 11. So what we do to solve it, we take the average between 10 and 11, which is 10 and a half, and we multiply that times itself. 10.5 times 10.5, that gives us 110.25. If the 103 is below that number, that means we're gonna be closer to the 100, which would be 10. If the 103 is above this number, that means it would be closer to the 11. So in this case, 103 is below the average square. So we'd say we're closer to the square root of 10 here. So our integer would be then 10 for our answer. Here we have negative 350. Well, I know that 18 times 18 would be 324. So let's write that down. That's less than 350. What's well, 19 times 19 then? That's 361. So I'm just for reference sake, I'm going to keep an 18 up here and a 19 up here so I don't forget. So we need to take the average of 18 and 19, which would be 18 and a half. 18.5 times 18.5. That's 342.25. So this 350 is above the 342. It's, be, it's above the average, which tells me that I need to have 19 for my closest integer. Here we're going to be classifying numbers, and you probably have seen this before, where we see that uh, all numbers are real numbers, and then we split the real numbers between irrational numbers, which are, have non-repeating decimals, then we have rational numbers, which have either repeating decimals or ending, terminating decimals, ones that stop, and then we have get more specific here. All integers are rational numbers, but they're also like you know whole numbers that could be either positive or negative. And then whole numbers are even more specific than that. They don't allow any negatives in the whole numbers. So if we look at this chart, we can answer these questions. We have the square root of 24. So if we do square root of 24, that would be 4.89897. See how this is not a repeating decimal? That means it would be an irrational number, right? It is a real number. It is always a real number, or most of the time. Is it a rational number? No. Irrational number? Yes. Is it an integer? Well, none of the irrational numbers are integers. Is it a whole number? It's also not a whole number, too. Let's do square root of 100, which I know is 10, right? Positive 10. So it's not an inner irrational number. It would be a rational number. So first of all, it's real. It's rational. It's not irrational. It's an integer, because those are whole numbers that can be positive or negative. But it's also a whole number because it's positive. Let's do negative the square root of 81. So that would be 9, and then the negative makes it negative 9. So it would not be irrational because it doesn't have a repeating decimal. It would be irrational then, an integer, but not a whole number because only positive numbers are allowed in whole numbers. So we'd say yes to real, yes to rational, 
no to irrational, yes to an integer, but then no at the end to a whole number. Let's look at these numbers then. Order the numbers from least to greatest, 4 over 3, negative the square root of 5, uh, square root of 13, negative 2.5, and then the square root of 9. So we just kind of had to put these under the number line to, to solve these then. So we have 4 over 3, that is 1.3, it's a repeating decimal. If I'm going to put that over here, I would say not quite half, it'd be right around here where 4 over 3 would go. Now I have this negative the square root of 5. So we would do square root of 5, which would be 2.23, but that's negative, so negative 2.24. So we're going to go negative 2, and then a little bit past that, negative 2.24. So that would be square root of 5, negative. Now we need to place the square root of positive 13. So square root of 13. That's 3.60, so let's go with 3.6. So we go to the 3, a little bit past that, a little more than halfway. That's the square root of 13 then. We have negative 2.5. Remember the negative square root of, of uh, 5 was negative 2.3, so we need to go a little bit farther. Okay, maybe to draw an arrow here. That's negative 2.5 to keep those separate. And then one more, square root of 9, which would be, we know, is a positive 3. So if we're going to write this in there, this would be the square root of 9. And then if you're going to order them, you just go from left to right. So negative 2.5 is the lowest. Negative square root of 5 is the second smallest. 4 over 3 is the next. Negative, or square root of 9 is next, followed by the square root of 13.